Hi, everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. We are on day two of our statistics unit, um, and the topic for today is drawing inferences. This you are going to see is very similar to when we were doing probability and we were trying to predict something happening um, with an experiment. So this is very, very similar. So the purpose of doing this is because you can use the results of a survey to predict the actions of a larger group. The ratios of the responses of a good sample are often the same as the ratios of the responses of the population. Okay, so if you have a really good survey, what y your results show should be pretty similar to what a survey of the entire population would show. Okay, so again, I'm going to go back to, I can't remember my example I gave you yesterday. I think it was about um, seventh graders' favorite subjects in school. So if I had asked every seventh grader at Calkins Road what their favorite subject in school was, my results should maybe <laughs> be similar to if I had asked every seventh grader, let's say, in the state. Um, probably not the best survey topic, but that is what this is all about. Okay, so we're drawing inferences based on the data and results that we got from our survey. Okay, so example one here says, Reggie thinks that more students in his school are right-handed than left-handed. He surveys the students in his class and finds that 23 of the 27 students are right-handed. If there are 750 students in his school, about how many can he expect to be right-handed? Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're actually going to be setting up a proportion, which we've done many, many times in our past units. So I want you to think of the results of the survey. Okay, so again, we're trying to figure out how many people are right-handed. And in the survey, it says 23 out of 27 students are right-handed. So that information is right there. So we're going to start our proportion almost as if it's a part over a whole question. 23 are right-handed out of the 27 total that were surveyed. And so what I want to do is I want to figure out out of the 750 students in the school, so 750 being my whole again, what part of that amount would I expect to be right-handed? Okay, so my proportion is right-handed people out of the total equals right-handed people out of the total. Okay, so the left side is your, your sample and the right side is the population. So remember, when you have a proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to do 27 times x is 27x equals 23 times 750. You guys can use a calculator for this um, topic, by the way. We should be getting 17,250. And so from here, in order to solve, we need to divide both sides by 27. And you should be getting 6. 138.8 repeating. Now, it's not possible to have 8 ninths of a student, which is what 0.8 repeating is, so we would actually want to round that. And we're just going to round normally. So 0.8 means I'm going to round up, so to the nearest whole number would be 639 students. Okay. Number two, Sarah is curious about the variety of spring sports that seventh graders participate in. She surveys one homeroom from each of the three teams and finds that 15 out of 72 people participate in track. If there are 250 seventh graders in her school, about how many can she expect to participate in track? Okay, so from our survey, we know that 15 out of 72 kids Said that they participate in track. And so I want to know how many out of the 250 seventh graders would we expect to participate in track? Okay, so there's our proportion part over whole. So again, we're going to cross multiply. 72 times x is 72x. 15 times 250 is 3,750. I'm going to solve the equation by dividing by 72, which gives me 52.083 repeating. So again, we can't have a fraction of a person, so we're going to round this normally. 
which would give us 52 students. Okay, if at any time you guys need to pause the video and kind of take a second to work something out, please do that. I'm going too quickly. Okay, number three. Mr. Blackwell's class brought photos from their summer break. The table shows how many students brought each type of photo. Okay, so if you look at the table, it says summer break photos. We have location and number of students for each. So it looks like most people said that they, or most people brought in pictures from a theme park and the least would have been from a campground. So it says there's 560 students at the school where Mr. Blackwell teaches. Predict how many students would bring in a photo taken at a theme park. Okay, so the first thing we wanna figure out is how many people in the survey, or how many people brought in theme park pictures. Okay, so we can see that right in the table, that's 11. We also need to know the total. Now, it doesn't tell us anywhere, I don't think. Nope. So we want to make sure we add these up. So 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 7 is 17. 17 plus 11 gives me 28. So 11 out of 28 people brought in a picture from a theme park. And I am predicting how many out of 560 would bring in a theme park picture. Okay, so cross multiplying 28x equals 11 times 560 is 6,160. And we're going to divide by 28. And we are going to get 220 students. Okay, great. Sample four. A survey found that one out of every 10 students has a vlog. Suppose there are 250 students at the school. About how many have a vlog? Okay, so based on the survey, one out of 10 have a vlog. And I wanna know how many out of 250? So 10 times X, 250 times one. We're gonna divide by 10. And you're gonna get 25 students. Okay, number five. A survey found that 85% of people use emojis in their text messages. Predict how many of the 2,450 students at Washington Middle School use emojis. Okay, so this one's a little tricky because it doesn't tell us the actual number of people in the survey. It tells us the percent. So when you're thinking part over whole, you have to know that that 85% is out of 100. So our part was 85% out of 100% said that they use emojis. And so on the other side of our proportion, I want to know how many out of 2,450 students would that be? Okay, so 100x, 85 times 2,450, I'm getting 208,250. Divided by 100, moves our decimal over two places. And so again, I can't have half a person, so I'm going to round that up. 2,083 students. Okay, awesome job. Let's go to the back. Sample six, the circle graph shows the results of a survey in which children ages 11 to 14 were asked whether they have a television in their bedroom. Okay, so you can see from the, the circle graph here, 46% said they have a TV in their bedroom and 54% said they don't. Notice those two percentages add up to be 100% because that would be the entire circle, okay? So when we need to predict how many out of 1,725 students would not have a television in their bedroom, we're going to use the percentages from the pie chart to do that. Okay, so we want to know how many would not have a television. Well, from the survey, 54% said they didn't. 
So 54 would be our part out of the 100% whole. And I need to know how many is that out of 1,725. Okay, so 100x equals, if I multiply that together, 93,150 divided by 100. That moves our decimal over two places. And we're going to want to round that to 932 students. Okay. Now in Part B, they're saying predict how many out of 1,370 students have a television in their bedroom. So they're changing a couple of things. It's changing the total number of students that we're talking about, and we're looking at how many actually do have a television. So back to the survey results, 46% out of 100 have a TV in their bedroom. And I want to know, okay, how many is that if the total is 1,370? All right, so 100x, 46 times 1,370 is 63,020 divided by 100. 630.2, 630 students. All right, we are almost there. Example seven, Colin surveyed a sample of his classmates to find out their favorite subject. The table below shows the results of Colin's survey. There are 400 students at Colin's school. How many students would you predict prefer math? Okay, so based on his survey results, we can see that 15 students chose math as their favorite subject. So 15 is my part. To get the whole, I have to figure out how many total students he surveyed. So we need to add these up. All right, so 15 plus 20 is 35, plus 10 is 45, plus 5 is 50. Okay, so 15 out of 50 students chose math, and I want to know how many out of 400 would also choose math. Okay, so 50 times x, 15 times 400 is 6,000. Divide by 50 gives me 120 students. Okay, number eight. Tori and Fiona each surveyed students in their school about how they would vote for the student council representative from the seventh grade. Tori surveyed the students in her homeroom. Fiona randomly surveyed 10 students from each of the five seventh grade homeroom classes. Their results are shown in the tables below. Use the results to predict the winner of the election. Okay, so based on Tori's results, we can see that the candidate with the highest number of votes was Andrew with nine. And in Fiona's results, the candidate with the highest number of votes was also Andrew. So for this question, we really don't have to do any math here because if, both, if in both classes or in both surveys, Andrew was the, the winner, we can assume that he would be the winner. We can assume that that prediction is accurate. So there really is no need to do anything more than that. Okay, last one. The owner of Champs is trying to find out the most popular menu item on the kids' menu. He keeps track of orders over the weekend and finds that out of 20 kids who ordered, seven of them ordered chicken fingers. If he is expecting 100 kids this week, how many orders of chicken fingers should he have on hand? Okay, so kind of going back here. 20 who ordered, seven of them ordered chicken fingers. Okay, so seven out of 20, there's my part out of whole, ordered chicken fingers. And I want to know how many out of 100 should I expect? Okay, so 20 times X, 
7 times 100, divide by 20, and we are going to get 35. So he should have 35 orders on hand. All right, guys, that is it. Great job today. Check back tomorrow for the next lesson.